Words of the deepest tenderness were the last that fell upon their ears from the lips of their Lord. With his hands outstretched in blessing, as if an assurance of his protecting care, he slowly ascended from among them, drawn heavenward by a power stronger than any earthly attraction. As he passed upward, the awe-stricken disciples looked with straining eyes for that last glimpse of their ascending Lord. A cloud of glory hid him from their sight, and their words came back to them as the cloudy chariots of angels received him. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. At the same time, there floated down to them the sweetest and most joyous music from the angel choir. While the disciples were still gazing upward, voices addressed them, which sounded like richest music. They turned and saw two angels in the form of men, who spoke to them, saying, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. These angels were of the company that had been waiting in the shining cloud to escort Jesus to his heavenly home. The most exalted of the angel throng, they were the two that had come to the tomb at Christ's resurrection, and they had been with him throughout his life on earth. With eager desire, all heaven had waited for the end of his tarrying in a world marred by the curse of sin. The time had now come for the heavenly universe to receive their king. Did not the two angels long to join the throng that welcomed Jesus? But in sympathy and love for those whom he had left, they waited to give them comfort. And they not all minister, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Christ had ascended to heaven in the form of humanity. The disciples had beheld the cloud receive him. The same Jesus who walked and talked and prayed with them, who had broken bread with them, who had been with them in their boats and on the lake, and who had that very day toiled with them up the ascent of Olivet. The same Jesus had now gone to share his Father's throne. And the angels had assured them that the very one whom they had seen go up into heaven would come again as he had ascended. He will come with clouds and every eye will see him. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Thus will be filled the Lord's own promise to his disciples. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Well might the disciples rejoice in the hope of their Lord's return. When the disciples went back to Jerusalem, the people looked upon them with amazement. After the trial and crucifixion of Christ, it had been thought that they would appear downcast and ashamed. Their enemies expected to see upon their faces an expression of sorrow and defeat. Instead of this, there was only gladness and triumph. Their faces were aglow with a happiness not born of earth. They did not mourn over disappointed hopes, but were full of praise and thanksgiving to God. With rejoicing, they told the wonderful story of Christ's resurrection and His ascension to heaven, and their testimony was received by many. The disciples no longer had any distrust of the future. They knew that Jesus was in heaven and that his sympathies were still with them. They knew that, he had, that they had a friend at the throne of God. And they were eager to present their request to the Father in the name of Jesus. In solemn awe, they bowed in prayer, repeating the assurance, Whatsoever you shall ask in the, the Father in my name, he will give you. Hitherto he, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. They extended the hand of faith higher and higher, 
with mighty argument. It is Christ that had died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And Pentecost brought them the fullness of joy in the presence of the Comforter, even as Christ had promised. All heaven was waiting to welcome the Savior to the celestial courts. As he ascended, he led the way, and the multitude of captives set free at his resurrection followed. The heavenly host, with shouts and acclamation of praise and celestial song, attended the joyous train. As they drew near to the city of God, the challenges given by the escorting angels, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Joyful, the waiting sentinels respond. Who is the King of glory, they say, not because they not know who he is, but because they would never be tired of hearing the exalted praise. The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Again is heard the challenge, who is the King of glory? For the angels never weary of hearing his exalted name. The exhorting angels make reply, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The portals of the city of God are open wide, and the angelic throngs sweep through the gates amid a burst of rapturous music. There is a throne, and around it a rainbow of promise. There are cherubim and seraphim, the commanders of the angel hosts, the sons of God, the representatives of the unfallen worlds are assembled. The heavenly council before which Lucifer had accused God and his son the representatives of those sinless realms over which Satan had thought to establish his dominion. All are there to welcome the Redeemer. They are eager to celebrate his triumph and to glorify their king. But he waves them back. Not yet. He cannot now receive the coronet of glory and the royal robe. He enters into the presence of his father. He points to his wounded head, the pierced side, the marred feet. He lifts his hands, bearing the print of nails. He points to the tokens of his triumph. He presents to God with a wave sheet. Those raised with him as representatives of the great multitude shall come forth from the grave at the, his second coming. He approaches the Father with whom there is joy over one sinner that repents, who rejoices over one with singing before the foundations of the earth were laid. The Father and the Son had united in a covenant to redeem man if he should be overcome by Satan. They had clasped their hands in solemn pledge that Christ should become the surety for the human race. This pledge Christ has fulfilled. When upon the cross he cried out, it is finished. He addressed the Father. The compact had been fully carried out. Now he declares, Father, it is finished. I have done thy will, O my God. I have completed the work of redemption. If thy justice is satisfied, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Amen. The voice of God is heard proclaiming that justice is satisfied. Satan is vanquished. Christ's toiling, suffering ones on the earth are accepted in the beloved. Before the heavenly angels and the representatives of the unfallen worlds, they are declared justified. Where he is, there his church shall be. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Father's arms encircle his Son. And the word is given, let all the angels of God worship him. With joy unutterable, rulers and principalities and powers acknowledge the supremacy of the Prince of Life. The angel hosts prostrate themselves before him while the glad shouts fill all the courts of heaven. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Songs of triumph mingle with the music from the angel harps till heaven seems to overflow with joy and praise. Love has conquered. The lost is found. Heaven rings with voices and lofty strains proclaiming blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
deacons.
Thank you. We hope that you enjoyed the program this morning. I know I did. A lot of work went into it. I want to thank everybody that is here this morning, everybody that participated. And as we close, let us stand by our heads. <laughs> After we have our closing prayer, uh, we have fellowship meal. It's going to be in the next room down. Everybody is invited to stay. Let us bow our heads and be in a spirit of prayer. Father, thank you so much for such a beautiful Sabbath day, for the worship service, for the songs, for the poems, for the readings. Father, I pray that all this will be done to your glory. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for the gift that you gave us in your Son, Jesus Christ, that you gave him to us forever, and that he promised to be with us, and I know from experience that that promise is true. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray that you will continue to bless us and use us. And if it is your will, bring us back next week. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.